I've been thinking about something I'm seeing in the astrology for a little while and I wanted just to share the general placements and associations that I kind of see happening for us all um, over the next three years. Obviously not limited to that endpoint, but this is just the scope in some of the progressions that I'm seeing. This particular video is focused on this theme of self-care or self-health care. This idea of being self-regulating in your energy and this having influence on healthcare in terms of uh, owning self-healing power and not giving power away to other people um, to determine what is wrong with you or how to fix you. These kinds of concepts. So obviously there's a few placements that I'm looking at um, and in no particular order. I'm just going to share the progressions with you. So currently we've got Jupiter placed in Aries at the time I'm recording this and uploading it. Um, and it's about to go retrograde back into Pisces and then it will re-enter uh, Aries in December of 2022, where it will stay until it enters Taurus. This is Jupiter in Taurus in 2023. So we've also got Chiron in Aries. Now, this is one of the anchoring factors with reference to this video in terms of Chiron being the wounded healer being about using our wounds as the access points to our freedom, essentially, because it's walking that path in coming out the other side, integrating the lessons, learning how to move the energy that was stored um, to create that wound and the reverberating effects of that wound. And then coming out the other side with this power and with this knowledge because you've seen it for yourself, you've done it for yourself. And that is a big theme when it comes to this self-health care thing is that um, the evidence is your experience, basically, and absolutely no one can counteract what you've done to heal yourself because you know it and it's cellular. Also with this is Neptune in Pisces. Neptune in Pisces has been a transit we've been experiencing for quite some time, but Neptune moves into Aries in 2025. Now, yes, that is a little ways away, but in the terms of a Neptune transit, three years is not much. And so what we're looking at here is Neptune in Pisces and our imagination and um, this dissolving of boundaries and um, beliefs and dogma and all these um, ideas about power and victimhood. And then um, as it's like becoming masterful at realizing what is true and what is real true resonance which is a Pisces thing you can't really explain this kind of um, understanding or just um, connection in many ways it is but um, as we master it and move into Aries we've got Neptune and Aries so this is a huge leap in terms of body capabilities like Aries first house I am your physical presentation here and Neptune which is Pisces domain and so there's this beautiful blending and um, that's a slow moving transit obviously like as we transition from N Neptune Pisces into Neptune and Aries like it, it's a very gentle and delicate progression but like I hope you're starting to see what I mean um, about these body adjustments and beliefs about our body and what we're capable of and how we're really attuned to these subtle senses and what we can do with them. So furthermore on this, Uranus is about to conjunct the North Node in Taurus. This is interesting because Uranus in Taurus is going to be there for the next little while, 2027, I think. So that's about changes to the electromagnetic field of the Earth. And we are, we are of the Earth. We are natural beings. And so that's a shift in itself. And then the North Node in Taurus is eventually going to move into Aries, so we'll have the North Node then transiting in Aries, which is exemplifying this Chiron in Aries. And it's going back into this domain of like where Jupiter is about to go. Then eventually it will go into Pisces as well. And then we've got currently Saturn in Aquarius making these shifts to energy management and our personal field and our contribution to the field and how serious that is and how we can't just be haphazard with um, our energy spends because that's contributing to discord in the field. So Saturn's teaching us this in Aquarius. Then it's going to move into Pisces and then that's going to be this whole new lesson in 
our spiritual connection, our victim crises, ideas of history and all this repression of information and this like annoyance that we had to go through this lesson in many ways, but also this release too that we can learn and rebuild from this. And that's what Saturn is going to do in Pisces. And it, it will be a testing transit, I think, because of um, it's just like a collective recalibration of structures and how wrong we might have been in many ways and how we've got a ways to go but I think we're energetically like way further along than we are physically and then eventually Saturn will move into Aries again so it's kind of this really incredible progression always coming back to like how it's educating us on our bodies and what we're really capable of and the last thing that I'll mention is Pluto is in Capricorn, which it's been in for a really long time, or it moves into Aquarius. So this is major change on a collective level. I'm sure I've missed things. This is very brief, and I just wanted to sort of dot point these ideas. But just to recap, here we have Jupiter moving through Pisces, Aries towards Taurus, basically showing us the the way Jupiter expands and reaches into the field, it's gaseous, it's permeating. So it's showing us how we are conductors and how our vibration affects things. And then we've got Uranus in Taurus showing us the greater whole, the connection to the earth and the natural cycles and the natural processes and the Taurus energy of growth, essentially. And then we've got Saturn teaching us how to manage our energy and be discerning and conscientious with how we spend our energy and the karma that we create as a result of our energy spends. Chiron is here just bringing this home to a really personal, deep vibrational level and a really powerful place within us, this hidden place that is like the dormant DNA that is within us and it hurts that we can't access it because we have this sort of leap to cross in a way but it's when we kind of soften into the potentials of this is and like see that there are other corners to take that corrosive container around that part inside begins to dissolve and Neptune is assisting with this absolutely and I think one of the major keys of this is imagination and being able to imprint or overlay visions of what you hope for yourself what you see for yourself what you see yourself as capable of what you know you're innately capable of and just existing in that imagination for ratios for percentages of your day and then noticing how there is an influence of that imagination on your physical life and it will be really um, subtle but it will begin to permeate and then you kind of start to see more and your perspective opens and your intuition ignites. So combine that with Pluto moving through the last degrees of Capricorn, that mastery again, and then into Aquarius where we've got this whole this whole realm of potential that we can play with. Consider the self-healing potential of the shift of what would happen if so many people realized that they were able to regulate their nervous system and how many the ripple effect of just a small percentage of people being able to do this kind of thing is serious. And I think it's really exciting. Um, of course, this is a potential. I'm just sharing something that kind of stands out to me as I look at the astrology moving forward. Maybe we could continue the conversation below, but I'm sure that in your own awareness, if you've been attracted to this video, you're going to be able to see what I'm saying and then piece in your perspective and share it below because um, this is a conversation that we should have and there are some links below if you're interested in more of this thanks for listening wish you well bye